<laughs> hey guys, today's a nacho day. And, oh, not just any nacho. <laughs> These nachos. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Finish it off now that it's out of the oven with some avocado. Green onion. Pico de gallo. Right in the center. And some daisy. Sour cream. Right next to that. And there we there we have it, the ultimate nacho platter from Shawnee Nachos. But how did we get here? Why are we here? Let's start with the why. Today's video made possible by the person that donated and wanted to see what I like to do when I'm whipping up a platter of nachos, Mr. David Black. $50 donation. I know you were Shawnee sandwiches, but in this episode, become Senior Shawnee and make your very... <laughs> and make your version of ultimate nachos. Your positive outlook on life is so refreshing after a hard day at work. Thank you. No, David, thank you. And for you is this. Recipe is below, but how did we get here? We got the why, we got the who, but the how, we started out real easy. 80-20 ground beef, brown it up, throw in the two-thirds cup of water, that taco seasoning blend you love to make so much with the game changer, the all-star in every lineup. Everything but the elote seasoning blend blend in with the meat in with the seasoning from TJ's you gotta have it let that thicken a that's what she said and then you're gonna add in your refried beans of choice and I love a mixture of refried beans in with the ground beef I don't like texture of gritty crumbly ground beef we got texture from so much else going on in here so many of the other components like the tortilla chips so we're gonna make a nice creamy base that's gonna go all over the chips previous Sean doing what previous Sean does El Ranchero restaurant style Mexican tortilla chips, authentic. Something that's gonna hold its ground with all the toppings on it, but not trying to steal the show. Some chips are so thick, too much, we don't want that. Mm. Good salt factor. People that get unsalted chips, psychotic. When you control your own destiny and you can decide how much every chip has on it, you're allowed to go, oh, I can actually make this even so no chip is gonna just be blank. We're working in layers, trying to cover all the chips. Secret ingredient, our Chihuahua cheese. And when you can, grate your own cheddar or something off the block, it's gonna melt better, it's just tasting so much better. It doesn't have any of those preservatives to keep it like attaching to the other cheese like in the bag, like the Chihuahua. If you can grate, grate some cheese. Got our red onion, pre-chopped on the first layer. And our third cheese, some queso for a little liquid cheese as well. Not for everybody, but we're a black olive family, so, you know, just omit this part if you don't like these. It's that easy. And our second layer of chips. And repeat. Chihuahua. Make it rain, once again, shred, shred, shred. More queso. Onion. Black olives. And then on this half, I'm gonna put freshly chopped, big jalapenos. Allie, these would crush her. I leave the seeds in. So on my half, we got some fresh jalapenos. Some jalapenos. <laughs> some jalapenos, if you will. I'm gonna put this in a 400 degree oven, let it get all toasty and melty, and then we're gonna hit it with sour cream, some pico de gallo, some chunked up avocado, and then we're ready to feast. This feels like it weighs 10 pounds. 
Do I live in an old barn? Have fun, my friend. Get nice and toasty toasty. We'll see you very soon. Gonna miss you. I just had sex. I'm about to eat nachos! It's the greatest moment of my life! Unless you screw it up with whatever it is you're about to say. An avocado, green onion, pico de gallo, sour cream, bam, we're done. We're ready. When I tell you this weighs nine and a half pounds, I'm being so, so honest with you guys. Just look at this platter. This would be great for about eight people standing around a kitchen island, but it's just me and Allie today. Like I said, I put jalapenos on this half, but I don't want anything to get cold. Let's get after it. David Black, the ultimate nacho for you, my friend. Cheers. Mm. Oh yeah. That bean meat mixture is so creamy and full of flavor. I just can't even. Mm. It's your half. Hi. Stay away from the spicy land. Very pretty. Isn't it gorgeous? This is, looks delicious. Better than a restaurant. Oh, I hope so. Not. I think restaurants. Oh, look at that. That looks massive. Oh my god. Restaurants notoriously are awful at making nachos. It takes a lot of care and a lot of steps and a lot of patience to do it well. And they're slinging out all this different stuff. I kind of get it. I don't really like ordering nachos from restaurants. That was incredible. <laughs> wow. I don't know how you're sitting in front of this like heat box that is the oven. <laughs> Can I turn this into like a baby taco? Also, like that's true at restaurants too. Like it's so not attractive to eat nachos. Like, no, not a date food. They're so good. <laughs> Hold on real quick. You know how much I've been into these tip-top canned cocktails? They make a margarita one. Cheers. Did I just shatter that? Oh! The lime is so good in that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that'll do. Here, you go over here. This chip ain't playing around. It's got a lot of it on there and a big ol' jalapeno. Hold it up. Mm. Another thing that happens at restaurants when they try to make nachos, the bottom of them, the chips are not even crunchy anymore. This is a bottom chip. Not soggy, had meat all over it. What do you guys like to put on your ultimate nachos? Ground beef isn't my favorite or anything. It's just so cheap and so easy to use. Look at this one. <laughs> Who said you can't eat Monday nachos, you know? Everyone's always talking about Taco Tuesdays. No. Anyway, margarita and Nacho Mondays. It's amazing you don't even need a lime with this or anything else. Tip top, that one smacks. How do you say smacks in Spanish? Tortazo? Tortazo. El golpe, the blow, to strike. But, Tortazo. is smack. Is that like buying smack from somebody by a dumpster behind a building, or is that smacking? To smack. Is? Golpear. Golpear. <laughs> a lot of people like don't want to use a utensil to eat nachos. They want it made in a way you don't need to. I understand that. Use a spoon or a fork to kind of like help guide and make these ultimate bites. Like, you don't need to eat right off the utensil, but you can use it as a tool. And up comes the toolbar. That's what she said, what we have to do. You know when you're just about to get off of a flight and the flight attendant comes on and tells everybody that things may have shifted during travel? Look, there's a lot going on here. Things may have shifted. Use a tool. And don't be the one. I don't work with the males, because I used to be one. So good. Want a plate? Feels very aggressive. Can't do that in a restaurant. Oh my God, why is this so difficult? There's so much cheese, oh no. it's triple cheese. You drop cheese into the oven. I dropped sour cream. <laughs> okay, if I eat all of this, I'm going to die. At home, when she's gotta get back to work, I totally accept that. When people at the table, when you're sharing nachos, are trying to break off their own part of the nacho and put it on a plate and eat them. No, this is a group effort. We are all in this together, trying to take down Goliath, okay? It's a bunch of Davids. And, spoiler, if you've never, read that parable or whatever it is, David always wins. Humans will always defeat nachos. I kind of love this. The spoon was situated just kind of on the side, but it's got two cheese, cheesy, meaty tortilla chips. I'm just going in. I'm not afraid to use a utensil. She's beautiful. I've talked about this in the vlog before. I was totally shocked 
how good the Top Golf nachos were. I went on a bachelor party years ago in Nashville and we went to Top Golf and we got a bunch of appetizers for the table. And that nacho was quite literally only like 12 chips that have everything on it. So it's not like a traditional nacho, but it was insane. So if anybody is still like going to places like Top Golf, have you ever had the nachos? I still think about it. And if you watch the vlog, you know how much I idolize. The most nostalgia of an appetizer for me is the skillet queso at Chili's. We did not go out to eat a ton as kids. My family would take us to Chili's. We would get two orders of the skillet queso and it was divine. Other notables, the Mile High Nachos from Champs Sports Bar. Is that still a thing? Because the one by me in my hometown isn't there anymore. On over to Livonia now, where Champs Sports Bar has closed up shop. Now, this is just one of several restaurants in the chain that shut down over the weekend without any warning. Parent company of Champs filed for bankruptcy earlier this summer. The only remaining Champs in the area is located right in West Bloomfield. Who else has really good nachos? I've never been, but I kind of imagine Cheesecake Factory would have like an insane nacho. Am I wrong? I'm just guessing. This looks like a good bite. Mm, it was. The process of making these is so fun. It's very involved. There's like so many things, but it's like anything in cooking. Like when you get to the finish line, oh, euphoria. You a sloppy sucker. <laughs> sloppy sucker. You a ugly mop. Yeah, the monster with all that S cream. <laughs> this platter, the one that I make when I do these, I mean, pretty traditional, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like from an actual food review perspective, you have so many different things going on. You have texture, you have crunch, you have creaminess, you have a hot and a cold. You have the freshness from the pico and like the, the raw onion and the green onion coming together is really, really nice. And then kind of like you get a little bit of that brine from the black olives, like a different kind of saltiness, which is great. There's just so many things. There's a reason why nachos are so popular, other than just the fact that it's delicious. It uses like so much of your senses almost. It's very weird and hard to describe to not sound like I'm a lunatic. But when you're sitting at your stovetop, looking down the barrel of a lens, you start to really think differently. Nobody cares, Sean. It's like eating salty cereal. <laughs> Nobody cares. I love this vlog because David, I would not have made this today and because of the show, I got to do it. And I get to chat with you guys all day about your nacho preferences, things you love in them. Do you make them in a party platter style like this? Tough to make just one off, one person nachos. Now you can get a small little tray and melt some cheese and like put some ground beef, but I don't know, like it really feels like a thing you gotta make for like a lot of people. I gotta get some fucking friends. I mean, truly every chip is loaded with stuff, I'm proud of that. And I was excited, I wanted to end the video on this. This is the Nucleus chip. There's always at the center of the nacho platter, there's like eight chips stuck together, and it's got everything on it, and it's just all kind of coagulated to be one thing. This is Jabba the Hutt. One, two, three. I appreciate you guys oh so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching me create this. And uh, tip top, once again, another one, <laughs> What am I, DJ Khaled? Another one. <laughs> Another one Another that one. is just a smacker, dude. What is with me today? The Venmo, the Cash App, the PayPal, if you wanna see me make something specific that you really, really love. David, I love the little tip on top of this one. It takes a lot to buy all the ingredients, but a $50 donation is a smacker. <laughs> this guy needs to stop saying smack. And as always, the board of directors on this show, which you can become a board of director for just $5 a month. It's not like very Sarah McLachlan. Stop. The Rory Boyle Fan Club, five bucks a month. You know what to do. Click the link below in the description if you want to sign up and get your name on this screen in every single video. And if you haven't noticed by, by now, I put out a lot of videos. I shouldn't, I should do way less. I, what am I doing? But you know, it's a lot of fun. Toledo's own David Black making this one possible. We love him for it. The ultimate Shawnee, Senior Shawnee nachos up. The ultimate Senior Shawnee's nachos down. This is gonna take all day to eat. And I hate food waste, so I better get to getting. Cheers. I can smell all the way to Indiana because of those jalapeno seeds. So take that for what it is, or isn't.
Yeah. Ask me what it feel like staring at a sky so vanilla telling Kurt Russell homie this ain't real life I'll be making good on my promises honesty is confidence a lot of it is missing but I realize I could be better than I was lighter on my feet cooking up the soul when we fire up the beat let the fire underneath me higher when I speak like I'm climbing up a steep tree ooh come and greet me after the show after the lights after the shot after the hoes half of them yours half of them mine